Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Don Ficken. I'm uh, this is the, with the St. Louis Astronomical Society and the Astronomical Society of Eastern Missouri in St. Louis. I'm part of a larger uh, task force that's been working to promote the library telescope program, where you can check out a telescope from a library just like a book. We've been doing monthly programs for quite a long time, and we have a really fun program for you tonight. Uh, this one's uh, really talking about a larger library uh, in, in Missouri, uh, the St. Charles City County Library. And we have a great program. We're gonna talk a little bit about their experiences with the, uh, the library telescope. So we, as you can see right here, we've had, uh, we've had these programs going on for some time. Uh, it is really covering a variety of topics, everything from, from fun at the telescope and library telescopes for children, uh, unlocking the mysteries of the night sky. Of course, tonight is the uh, library expense sharing experiences in Missouri. And next month on July 21st, we'll have a program called Navigating the Night Sky with Stellarium Software. And if you've never experienced Stellarium Software, it's a free software that you can either use on a web-based or you can download. And when you go outside, it's a really good way to learn about what you'll see and you can really plan your night sky observing around that. These programs, by the way, are all available uh, either on Facebook or you can go to YouTube. We have a whole YouTube library that we've been building for some time now. Uh, that not only include these particular uh, videos, but also some how-to videos. In fact, Chuck right here is one of our presenters tonight, has done a lot of videos of, for example, how to use the uh, red dot finder or just make different uses of different parts of the telescope. And so it's just a really good way to learn. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop my share, screen share here tonight and uh, like to, to introduce Elizabeth Nelson from the St. Charles City County Library. Hi, Elizabeth. And Chuck Sims, he's with the Astronomical Society of Eastern Missouri. I'm a member of that group as well. And Chuck manages the, uh, the telescope program for that particular library. I'd like to welcome you both. And really, thanks for joining us tonight. We're so excited to have you. And I'd uh, love to hear what you have to kind of say. And I'm happy to be a little bit on the inside here because I've been part of this group in different ways. And uh, I just think it's got really a lot to talk about. So Elizabeth, let's start with you tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about your library and your patrons and your role. Sure. So um, the St. Charles City County Library, we are located in St. Charles County, which is um, outside of St. Louis, the city. We have St. Louis City County, St. Louis County, and then, uh, or St. Louis City County, St. Louis County, and then St. Charles County. Uh, so we are uh, definitely suburban, and then in the western and north and south part of the counties, we have some um, rural areas. We have a population of uh, over 400,000, wow. that was the last count, yep, <laughs> so it's climbing up there, um, and almost 600 square miles. Oh my gosh. Yep, yeah, so yeah, pretty large. That, that also, for some reason, kind of grew a little bit. We weren't really sure how that happened. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> high growth area, right? I mean, it has been in the past, right? Yeah. What was it? I say it's been a high growth area in the past and it's been kind of fun in that part, right? Yeah, land area, yeah. I didn't know how the mileage grew. We thought maybe some islands were put in some of the rivers, I don't know. Yeah, so um, there you go. Yeah. Somebody mm. moves some strings to, for the length of the boundaries of the county, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah let's take yeah. that part. <laughs> so. We're not a like square, we're a, like a, a lopsided tornado, so right. um, yeah. So well, you have a lot of branches, right? You have, uh, we, do. we have 11 branches. Wow. Yeah, all over the county. So we have um, in Augusta, which is a, a real um, rural, beautiful little town. Uh, we have one out there and then we are moving west. So as our population growth um, and houses go up and um, happens in the western part, we're moving that way to serve those um, customers as well. Wow. So, yeah, so That's it's really a time of growth. So tell me, how many telescopes do you have today? Uh, today we have 18. Wow. And uh, the program is really popular, especially, um, or the, the, the collection is very popular, especially in the summer months. Um, the different telescopes uh, stay at different branches, and then you can put a hold on and then go pick up the telescope um, at whatever branch it is that you put the hold on. Um, we have like one, two, or three at all of our different locations. Um, they're a little bit different because they're kind of big and bulky, so we don't like other materials where you can um, request it and have it sent to your closest branch to pick up. We don't do that with the telescopes because they're, you know, a little fragile and, and they are a little bit um, kind of clunky to move around. So. Right. So what's your checkout period? Is it, uh, how, is it a week, more than one two week? Weeks. Two yeah. weeks. Yeah, so 
we do two weeks. Uh huh. Yeah. So that gives you a good, you know, couple weekends to get some good stargazing in and um, a few nights if it's a little cloudy and that kind of thing. So. So is that consistent with the other checkout materials? Is everything else two weeks as well, or does that just happen to be for telescopes? Um, that is, yeah. So two weeks for um, most things. I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And are they able to check them out? Is, is there typically a waiting line for these things? Right now there is, um, as I said, like in the summer months, especially, but there, it's not a super long hold time. Um, like when some popular books come in, you know, there could be like uh, 50, you know, holds on them, you know, like for Michelle Obama's becoming or that kind of thing, oh, right, um, right. you know, we can't keep up with demand. Um, but right now there's, I think there was about uh, 11, uh, 11 holds and we have 18 telescopes. So it shouldn't be too long if, you know, a customer would go in today and put a hold on it. So, um, it's, it's kind of keeping up with the demand. Right. So has COVID kind of affected the way that the telescopes have been checked out as far as you guys go? Um, yes. So we, um, when the pandemic first hit, we shut all the way down and we weren't doing any materials. So no books, no nothing, just, um, right. books and e-audio and online resources. And then, um, we started introducing just kind of the regular physical books. Um, and eventually we brought back our whole library of things, which the telescopes are part of, and they were our first, um, item in the library of things. Oh. So now we're, we're back to running. Um, so yeah, circulation was a bit down in the, you know, the year of the pandemic um, for everything. And then especially the library of things. Uh, plus we were only curbside for a while. Right. But now we're back up. And so what are some of the other library things? I know that when I talk with some libraries, they've really just, this is their first thing that they've ever checked out, you know, but you guys sound like you're doing more, but the library telescope is the first thing that you did, is that right? Yes, so that was the first item, and I believe, um, Chuck, that ASE, or ASEM approached us about doing the, doing the telescopes and that, and so that mm -hmm. was kind of our first introduction, yep. um, and then we, you know, saw that other libraries were doing these library things, so we thought we'd add some more. Um, we did cake pans in 2015, oh, which is super fun because you can get like all sorts of cartoon characters. Like if your kid loves uh, Mickey Mouse, you know, we have a ginormous cake pan of Mickey Mouse. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So all sorts of fun cake pans. Um, we have instant pots. Uh, we have, um, we had fitness kits for a while. Um, we also have um, a lot of um, like cookie cutters and kitchen equipment, air fryers, digital scale, spiralizer. Um, we have big outdoor games. So like huge tic-tac-toe game that you can play for outdoor parties. Um, if, uh, oh, we have like literacy kits. So other things for, um, for kids and learning to read and that kind of thing. Um, another exciting thing that we have that we got um, from our through our partnership with ASCM is the binoculars, which oh, I have a beautiful set. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I know Chuck, uh, do you want to talk about the binocular kit? I know you um, had that. Chuck in here. He's, uh, he's yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we got the binoculars. We got yeah. the, the full kit. We started this in 2019. I think it was like August of 2019 is when we uh, started the binoculars. Yeah. I know you've got at least one set at every branch. Mm -hmm. And Every time I go out and I'm, I'm looking to see if they're checked out or not, it seems like I'm going to say 75% of them are checked out every time I look. Yeah. At least 75%. Mm -hmm. So they've been hugely popular. And mm -hmm. these are just excellent binoculars. Mm -hmm. They are not like, you know, plastic ones you buy for 10 bucks. These are nice, heavy, uh, just really good binoculars. I use them myself quite a bit now, but mm -hmm. the, you know, we have like birds out in our backyard and we'll, we'll use these to look at them. So yeah. love these. And uh, when we, and just to put a plug in here real quick, starting in July, we're going back to our live star parties at the library. Oh, goodness. And yeah. So we'll have binoculars out there and we'll be using them there and I'll give the presentation on how to use them. Um, mm -hmm. But also going back to what you said earlier, Don, on YouTube, I did a whole presentation on how to use the binoculars and set them and everything. Mm -hmm. So Chuck, what comes with binoculars? That's not something we've not talked about on other programs as far as our library telescope. So it's not just the binoculars. You have other things. But, but, yeah, they come, they come in a hard shell case. 
so you can't hurt them when you're traveling. And with that, you get a book on the night sky and another book on, for us, it's, it's birds in, uh, I believe, Missouri or the Midwest. I can't remember which it is. Yeah. I've got it right behind me. I can probably go grab it. Um, oh, I got it right here, actually. Yeah, right there you go. Yeah, That's like bird. Mm -hmm. and what, was, what was the night sky one? Uh, oh, yeah, it's actually this one. Oh, that's the manual. And then there should be one more for the night sky, uh, isn't there? I do not have that one in here. So, um, huh. Next trip, instruction mat carrying case. Yeah. You must be that's checking. Well, I, will find it. I don't have it here either. My, yeah, my bad. yeah. So, those, so it's really just a package kit. So, a lot of times I think they can use the binoculars if they're waiting or maybe just finding the, the night sky, what's in the night sky, so they can actually point a telescope to it. Is that right? Um, what was that question again? Tom? Yeah, so, so what they're using is you're using the binoculars to find things in the night sky so they can actually find, you know, look at it with a telescope, a particular object. So the binoculars provide a wider field of view for them to be able to see something with, a, with actually a telescope itself. A absolutely. And some things it's not even practical to look at the telescope with. You know, like uh, if you're looking at the Pleiades, there's some kind of open cluster that's so big, the telescope would only give you a partial of it, but binoculars give you a fantastic view of it. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I, I presume you've not been with the library since they started it, but you've probably heard the stories about, uh, I mean, it was a pretty big step to go from books, really, to just a library of telescopes, right? Mm -hmm. So why did they just start, decide to start to launch a library of telescope? What made them think that that was a good idea? Yeah, so I think generally the library, like our, our library wasn't the first one to jump into the library of things. Um, but we kind of saw that as an opportunity to do it. And then we had, you know, someone um, like Chuck approach us with a, a local organization that had this great um, uh, uh, piece of equipment that we thought our customers would like. And um, the library is generally, you know, it's moving towards what do customers need? You know, what are um, you looking for? It's not just about literacy, but it's about expanding knowledge in any way and connecting with your community. So right, we're right. You know, doing both of those things um, through the telescope program. So um, yeah, so it seemed like a great idea for something to try and it really took off. So would you say your staff would be um, intimidated now by telescopes? Or are they pretty comfortable with them? I'm sure it depends if they're new or not, right? Yes. Sure. I think, yeah, because I think that, you know, the stereotype of the library is still like, you got to be really quiet and hush hush and you get your books and you keep them clean. Um, and so the expanding the idea of the library, um, with new staff that come in, you know, they still have that idea. Um, so yeah, they can, it can be a little bit intimidating because it's also like a big expensive piece of equipment. It's not something you want to drop. Um, but we, um, you know, Chuck has provided great training for how to handle the telescope and like how to package it and how to help customers know how to put it in their car and buckle it in. Um, so it's a pretty, you know, uh, quick learning curve to be like, okay, yeah, we do books, but we also do all these other cool things. Um, and the customers are excited too, because we have, you know, like our, our, when they learn about all this other stuff we have, like now we have mobile hotspots, which are super popular. Oh, wow. um, and that's, you know, technology equipment that are things that, um, you know, maybe you don't want, you want to, you know, try a MacBook before you would even consider picking, you know, buying it. And the same thing with a telescope, you know, you're, you might not really want to purchase one, but you really want to use one. And that's what the library is there for. Right. That's great. And that's exactly when I'm talking to people, I, I let them know that. So check it out from the library first. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for our group, go out to Bromo Seek Park on a Friday night where we're doing an open house. Mm -hmm. Look at telescopes, try them out. Don't buy something without understanding exactly right. what you want. And a library scope is the fantastic, you know, beginner's telescope. It is so easy to use. Mm -hmm. So Chuck, I'm, or maybe Elizabeth, either one of you can talk to this. You know, a lot of times uh, people in general are intimidated by telescopes, but my experience has been children pick up very quickly on how to use these things. In fact, it's almost funny because they're teaching their parents, like, mom, it's really easy. Is that your experience? It, absolutely. Whenever we have the star parties, um, yeah. us usually I can pick out a, a kid somewhere between eight and 12, and they'll pick it up and we go out and we're actually using the scope. I'll let them go first and I go, you got it. Okay. You're running this one. And so they'll run that library telescope and I'll break out a different one. Mm -hmm. And so, and it, it's just interesting to watch them just pick it up. They love it. Yeah. That's yeah. great. 
So if you're joining us tonight, uh, we're talking with the St. Charles City County Library. We're doing a library telescope program tonight talking about this, and we're glad to have Elizabeth Nelson with the St. Charles City County Library and Chuck Sims with the Astronomical Society of Houston, Missouri. We'll be taking questions just in a few minutes, and how you do questions if you're on Zoom, just type them in the Q&A, and we'll get to those shortly. And if you're on Facebook, we are all live streaming on Facebook, just put them in the comments area, and we'll be checking those very shortly. All right, Elizabeth, let's, uh, let's talk about the other side of it. Uh, what kind of challenges have you had with the library telescope program? You know, a lot of times I talk with libraries, they go, oh, that looks pretty difficult. There's challenges. What have you guys faced during the launch and just running the program? So I think um, first, as we kind of just talked about, the, it, the library of things was new with the telescopes. And so this was a new um, venture for us, a new type of collection. So um, you know, kind of getting people on board and like, yeah, we're going to try this and we're also going to try it with this super clunky big thing. Um, and we're going to buy a bunch of them and ship them around. Um, so I think, we're, you know, definitely getting excitement and buy-in from everyone uh, to, to, get, uh, to get it to happen. Um, I think the, the two things um, that I um, actually, I asked our collection development um, director, Carol Shry. So she gets a huge shout out. Um, she works uh, real hard and she works with Chuck too um, quite a bit on the collection. So shout out to Carol. Um, right. Thank you for all your help um, and for kind of giving me a little bit of the backstory. Um, she said that the um, definitely figuring out how to transport them was a big thing um, to, you know, take them from where they were um, you know, checked in or dropped off and moved them. Um, that was something they had to figure out. That was, you know, different than a pile of books. Um, and then also things like putting on identification and like who owns this and, you know, barcodes and those kind of things. Cause you know, books, you just slap it on, you know, the inside of the front cover or the back. Um, and that's pretty easy, but, um, kind of figuring out those little things and then what to, what to do when they break. Cause we're not, you know, our staff is not, telescope experts. Uh, so what, you know, should we fix anything? What should we do? Um, and usually we just email Chuck and say, hey, <laughs> we got a problem, please help us. <laughs> and Chuck is really wonderful and is always willing to, to um, help us fix things uh, that have gone wrong. So. so Chuck, what are you seeing as far as maintenance problems from your perspective? As far as, well, the, the, one of the bigger things I get called out for is just the collimation. They go, hey, I'm not seeing things right. But I'll be honest, most of the time, the collimation is pretty close. So I don't think that was the real issue. Um, I think it may have been just focusing, you know, more of a training. Um, but, you know, I'd say collimation is, is probably the number one thing I get called for. Um, the red dot binder being off where they go, I, I, I put it on the right thing, but the, it wasn't there type deal. And so uh, I've been out where the red dot binder has been, you know, totally turned around, uh, loose. So that's one of the, the bigger problems we as a, a larger group have been trying to solve. Um, other than that, uh, everything else has been pretty minor. The, the telescopes really are in fantastic shape. Even after we started in May of 2015, so this is year seven for us, and the telescopes are still really just in good shape all in all. The mirrors look good. There's not a lot of scratches or dents that I'm seeing in the telescopes. So it, it, most of it's been minor. So Chuck, for the folks that are uh, librarians are saying, okay, that sounds pretty technical. What's collimation mean? What does that actually mean, Chuck? Well, collimation is just aligning the two mirrors in the telescope. So you get the optimal viewing, you get the best sharpest picture you can. And we have a tool that we use to collimate it, uh, a laser collimator. Um, and I don't know if Elizabeth has used it before, I'm trying to remember, but the library does have one and I, I train people there, more than happy to train you guys in the future too. But it's very simple. I mean, most times when I get called out, I'm in and out in five or six minutes. And that's me not just fixing whatever the issue was, that's me going through and give it a complete look over to make sure everything's good and ready to go. All right. And what about a red dot finder? Why do you have a red dot finder? Well, the red dot finder, uh, well, if you, you think about it, when you look through the eyepiece of the telescope, you're seeing about a, a dime's view of the sky. It's a real small piece. But when you look through the red dot finder, you're seeing, you know, um, like a, a grapefruit size, a much bigger area. And so what the red dot finder does is it allows you to get 
the object, the star, the moon, the planet, whatever it is, if you get it in the red dot binder and there's literally a red dot in there, you get that red dot on there and then you look in the uh, eyepiece, you're going to see that object. It may not be in the very center, but it'll be in the view so you can get it there real quick. Right. So it, it's, it's just a quick way of finding things. Okay, so it sounds like the maintenance has been reasonably well. And thanks to Chuck, I think that really makes that. So Elizabeth, the, one of the challenges that I've, when I've talked with other libraries, is that they have this great program, but nobody knows about it. So how do you guys go about promoting the library telescope program within your library? Sure. So we do, um, well, right now we kind of, a little over a year ago, switched to a lot of uh, social, more social media and online advertising. Um, but we also have had um, uh, posters and flyers and that kind of thing uh, in branches, so physical uh, promotion. And then um, we have um, events called star parties, which Chuck mentioned earlier. And pre-COVID, we had like two, I think, about two a month from April through November. I think more like three or four. Some, three or some, four. Okay. Yeah. Oh, three or four. Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, We're busy. Yeah, we were, yeah. Um, so we have those throughout all of our 11 branches. Um, and what that is, is we have um, uh, usually Chuck and then a couple other guys from um, ASCM come and bring telescopes. And then we have um, one here as well mm -hmm. uh, that we um, uh, have for people just to come as a class and just learn how to use the telescope. And you, you learn how to use the library telescope. Um, Chuck goes through all sorts of, um, like at the beginning, kind of the ins and outs of how to use it, and then you just get to try. So um, it's real informative, and it's really great because, like, you don't, you know, have this huge thing that you don't know what to do with, and, you know, you're intimidated and not sure if you should, you know, move this lever or what you're supposed to do. So it's great for, you know, learning, and then you can um, check one out for yourself or your family. Uh, so yeah, so those are a great way to promote um, the the library uh, or the telescopes in the library of things. There you go. And, and Elizabeth, I just want to throw out there that along with just the library telescopes you can check out, you've got the educator program mm -hmm. where okay. teachers yeah. can check out uh, not yeah. only the, the library telescope, but also a daytime uh, sunspotter telescope. Yes. yes, correct. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then you're, you know, introducing all the kids who, as you know, Chuck says, are kind of have more of an intuitive, like, you know, can can kind of you know, jump in and figure things out a little bit, maybe a little more than adults, because we're stuck in our ways. And, you know, you we, go. you know. So I want to get to some questions here. We do have a few questions from the audience here, but I want to ask uh, Elizabeth. So mm -hmm. if you're a new library, Mm -hmm. What would you tell them about starting a program? Would you recommend to start it? And what advice would you give them? Yeah. So yeah, definitely start it. Um, I think, look, if you, if you um, have a library of things and kind of know how that works, that's one way to kind of um, jump in. But if you, you haven't done any sort of non-traditional materials, um, I definitely think it's it's a good thing or a great thing to start with, and you've got a bunch of angles to, to connect with customers on that. Um, you can, um, like I said, do the star parties, um, and to do all that stuff, you um, want to connect with someone in your area that is kind of an expert on telescopes. Uh, so like an astronomical society, uh, I think would be kind of your best bet to reach out to them. Um, I know other libraries, we'd love to help you and support you um, to bring this to your customers because we always get amazing feedback about how awesome, you know, this is and how fun and how they didn't, you know, it's one of those things where they didn't know libraries had this stuff and like, yeah, we do. Um, so you're welcome to reach out to um, our library as well. I'm happy to help. Um, my uh, email address is enelson. Um, I think you guys see my name, um, but E Nelson, E N E L S O N, at stchlibrary.org. Uh, so I can help with um, any kind of, I'm, you know, more classes and events kind of stuff. Uh, but as I mentioned, Carol Shray earlier, our collections development um, director, she is happy to help too. Um, and he, her email is C S C H R E Y at stchlibrary.org. And I can throw those in the chat or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe throw them in the Facebook too, if you don't mind, or just if you're sure. that sure. So. Yeah. 
So we do have a couple questions. Let's see if we can get, if I can get these off of here. Uh, one is, will we have slides available to be sent? Actually, we're just doing this without slides. You can quite tell, but we will be posting this to YouTube tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. We have a, if you go to our library telescope.org and hit the YouTube button at the very top right, we will not have only have this program, but we'll have uh, all some of the previous programs and you can play any of those. And of course you can reach out as Elizabeth, Elizabeth said to us for specific questions. Um, I have another question here. It looks like this person's in New Orleans and it says, uh, and I'm a, I am in New Orleans and I'm a member of my local astronomy club. How can you help me get my library and astronomy club engaged and involved in setting up a library telescope and binocular program? Do you wanna address that, Chuck? Well, the first thing I would say is we have a larger group, which you know Don actually uh, runs which is a nationwide, and in case we have a couple outside the US, um, where we, we talk about how to get libraries uh, involved. So the first thing I would say is, you know, let's get you part of that group, you know, as you as a member of your group, and then we can talk about your specific needs. We can see if we have anything that's already down in your area, we can see, uh, um, you know, see what interest your rest of your group has. And then we can talk about, you know, actually getting you uh, the telescopes and what modifications need to be done to them because we try to lock these down so that the general public can't accidentally screw them up, um, for lack of a better term to put it. Yeah, so all you have to do really is just go out to our librarytelescope.org and hit and just put in the uh, contact us and we can get you involved in our library telescope uh, monthly meeting. It's, it's a basically pro experienced program managers. We have uh, program managers in the US and actually we recently ad uh, added in a Amsterdam, the Netherlands, which is kind of fun. And so we trade best practices and all that. So just feel free to do that and we'll, we'll get you involved here. It looks like we've got some more questions here. Uh, this is coming from Facebook, and it's about the binocular programs, and it says the binoculars are very versatile and will allow you to spite, spot most of the Messier objects, eagles as well. Chuck, you want to explain what a Messier object is? Well, a Messier object is one of, I believe, 110 that Charles Messier, back in the 1700s, and then some of his students after he passed away, uh, found, and they found them looking for comets. And you know, a comet moves in a night sky. And so they would find these fuzzy objects they thought were comets and they'd watch them for a couple of nights. And when they didn't move, they, they, they'd mark down the coordinates and put an X to them because they didn't want to look at them anymore. And it turned out to be some of the most beautiful objects in the night sky. So these are um, globular clusters, open clusters, uh, nebulas like the Eagle Nebula or um, remnants of supernovas like the Crab Nebula. I mean, it's just gorgeous objects. So it's one of the prized things that people in astronomy like to look at now is the Mezzanine object. Right. So there's a group called the Astronomical League, which is part of our library telescope program. And they've, they've got all kinds of information about the things like the Messier objects. In fact, they've even got awards where if you go through it, if you're a member of an astronomy club and you go through this list, you can get a pin or award of some sort. And some are very easy, some are very difficult. So I'd encourage you to check it out. I think it's astroleague.org. I believe that's correct. Is that right? And so anyway, I could encourage that. Okay, the next comment is uh, telescopes are a foreign tech to most. That's why the library telescope program is so valuable. And I will say that uh, what I was surprised about binoculars when we started this in St. Louis and in St. Charles is how many people really never use binoculars. I really don't even know how to use them. And so it's a really great introduction. Is that your experience, Chuck? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, and people really like them. At first they're thinking, you know, I just want to use the telescope because I want to get a better view. But once they actually use some binoculars, night sky, or even, you know, using it at things on the ground, people love it. They don't really want to give them back. Right. So yeah. it's a great program. So, so Elizabeth, have you been able to attend some of the programs or make use of the telescopes or anything yourself personally? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I've gone to a few different star parties. Mm -hmm. um, we had one, there was, uh, let's say so, two summers ago, our summer reading uh, theme was Universe of Stories. Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah, we celebrated with, um, you know, lots of star parties. And then we had um, different members of ASEM give um, classes on other related, you know, star related topics. So we had one on, um, let's see, photography. So it was like nighttime photography. Um, we had one on like kind of the history of constellations. Um, so we had a, a variety of those. 
Um, and then we had one, um, trying to remember, it, I think it was at the Spencer Road Branch. Yeah, we had the daytime where we had the uh, solar yeah. telescopes out. Right, yes. Uh -huh. and we were looking yeah. at the sun. It was gorgeous yeah. that day, too. Yeah. It was hot, too. Yes. It was, it was a July day. It was, uh huh. Yeah. Yep. It was, uh, uh yeah. Yep. Yep. We had the Star Wars party and then we had the Star Party afterwards. So it was a, yeah, it was a fun day. <laughs> Yeah, what I think is so fun about these is that, you know, a lot of times you watch NASA and you look at pictures, but it's not the same as really seeing it through a real telescope because it teaches right. you about everything from earth conditions, weather conditions and clouds and all those things come together in one thing. Mm -hmm. So we're coming up on our half hour here. Uh, do you guys want to have some parting comments? Uh, I don't see any more questions at the moment. Uh, I'm sure there are some. Maybe we'll get some later in chat. Uh, Elizabeth, you want to tell us anything you want to add to what we talked about tonight for libraries that are thinking about this? Uh, you know, a lot of them are not sure about this still. Right. Yeah, I definitely encourage you to try. Um, and if you don't want, you know, we have like 18 telescopes right now. If you want to just get a couple and, you know, get used to it, uh, you know, start small and see. Um, I'm sure your demand is going to go up. So, um, uh, but yeah, definitely. It's definitely worthwhile doing and exploring the library of things. Um, and if you have um, like the, the uh, viewer from New Orleans, if you need things, you know, like stats or, you know, like circulation of telescopes and things to help encourage your libraries to do it, um, we would be happy to, you know, provide that and uh, to encourage them to do that. So, uh, yeah, please reach out. Um, it's a really, uh, really fun and exciting um, class and event and program for our uh, community. Great. Chuck, you're an amateur astronomer. So if you're an amateur astronomy club saying, I don't know if we really want to get into this, what would you say to them, Chuck? I would say absolutely get into it. I mean, if one of the main things that amateur astronomy groups really want to do is outreach. And I have found no better outreach than the library program. It, it just touches so many people and it, it gets the word out in a way that the astronomy clubs by themselves can't do. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you both for joining us tonight. This has been a fun program. I just love to hear uh, what you had to say, Elizabeth and Chuck. You both have different perspectives, one from a librarian and one is from an astronomy club. And it's quite clear that you're both uh, enthused about it. And also the program is doing live and well. So uh, once again, thanks for everybody for joining us tonight. So what we'll be doing is this, of course, will be available right now on Facebook because that's the way Facebook works. But uh, sometime tomorrow, we'll put it out there on uh, YouTube and you can play it. And uh, feel free to visit our librarytelescope.org or our Facebook page, librarytelescope.org slash face, uh, slash library telescope, I'm sorry, facebook.com slash library telescope. Sorry about that. And uh, we, we have a couple thousand followers. We've had a really great volunteer working on that. And so there's a lot of ways to get in touch with us and don't hesitate to ask us any questions about the library telescope program. We'll do what we can to help you think very much. So thanks to both of you and have a great evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yep.